<laughs> so I, I believe Cam has something for us to do? Uh, yeah, well, I was challenged to read from uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, but I don't, track. I don't think I can. So what I can offer to do is read from something else that I quite like. OK. I, th I think if that would be okay. acceptable. I yeah. think that would be OK. So uh, I think we'll accept that. And then I'm going to finish up with my MSDS for Sweet. Desert Bus. Oh, great. Then we get to show you the thing. Do you need to sit here or do you want my I can sit here. Like, wherever. Where are you like? Yeah, because Corey's oh, here right. now. I've got something oh, I, I want to do with yep. Ian in a few minutes as soon as camp's done. Uh, before you do that, oh, I have a moist. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Okay. That, whoa! You're like a cheese hat. That's, those guys are. Those, those videos make me nervous. Yeah, I half expect to worst. just like a cab to come by and worst. clean them out. Damn. Well, I, I like I, I just watch them like teeth, 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 teeth. Ugh. Like praying. Okay. Oh, that couch is this so couch. hard to get. Sorry. All right, so hopefully I can get through this in like a couple minutes. Let me just check it again. Yeah. Okay. So. In place of I have no mouth and I must scream something that's vaguely related thematically, uh, it's called Narcissus. In the afterlife, you receive a clear answer about our purpose on the earth. Our mission is to collect data. We have been seated on this planet as sophisticated mobile cameras. We are equipped with advanced lenses that produce high resolution visual images, calculating shape and depth from wavelengths of light. The cameras of the eye are mounted on bodies that carry them around, bodies that can scale mountains, spelunk caves, cross plains. We are outfitted with ears to pick up air compression waves and large sensory sheets of skin to collect temperature and texture data. We have been designed with analytic brains that can get this mobile equipment on top of clouds, below the seas, onto the moon. In this way, each observer from every mountaintop contributes a little piece to the vast collection of planetary surface data. We were planted here by the cartographers, whose holy books are what we would recognize as maps. Our calling is to cover every inch of the planet's surface. As we roam, we vacuum data into our sensory organs, and it is for this reason only that we exist. At the moment of depth, we awaken in the debriefing room. Here, our lifetime of data collection is downloaded and cross-correlated with the data of those who have passed before us. By this method, the cartographers integrate billions of viewpoints for a dynamic, high-resolution picture of the planet. They long ago realized that the optimal method for achieving a planet-wide map was to drop countless little rugged mobile devices that multiply quickly and carry themselves to all reaches of the globe. To ensure we spread widely on the surface, they made us restless, longing, lusty, and fecund. Unlike previous mobile camera versions, they built us to stand crane our necks, turn our lenses onto every detail of the planet, become curious and independently develop new ideas for increased mobility. The brilliance of the design specification was that our pioneering efforts were not prescripted. Instead, to conquer the unpredictable variety of landscapes, we were subjected to natural selection to develop dynamic, unforeseen strategies. The cartographers do not care who lives and dies, as long as there is broad coverage. They are annoyed by warship and genuflection. It slows data collection. When we awaken in the giant spherical windowless room, it may take a few moments to realize that we are not in heaven in the clouds. Rather, we are deep at the center of the earth. The cartographers are much smaller than we are. They live underground and are averse to light. We are the biggest devices they could build. To them, we are giants, large enough to jump creeks and scale boulders an impressive machine ideal for planetary exploration. The patient cartographers pushed us out onto a spot on the surface and watched for millennia as we spread like ink over the surface of the planet until every zone took on the color of human coverage, until every region came under the watchful gaze of the compact mobile sensors. Estimating our progress from the control center, the mobile cameras the mobile camera engineers congratulated themselves on a job well done. They waited for humans to spend lifetimes turning their data sensors on patches of ground, the strata of rocks, the distribution of trees. And yet, despite the initial success, the cartographers are profoundly frustrated with the results. Despite their planetary coverage and long lifespans, the mobile cameras collect very little data that is useful for, for cartography. 
Instead, the devices turn their ingeniously created compact lenses directly into the gazes of other compact lenses, an ironic way to trivialize the technology. On their sophisticated sensory skin, they simply want to be stroked. The brilliant air compression sensors are turned toward the whispers of lovers rather than critical planetary data. Despite their robust outdoor design, they have spent their energies building shelters into which they cluster with one another. Despite good spreading on large, sca on large scales, they clump at small scales. They build communication networks to view pictures of one another remotely when they are apart. Day after day, with sinking hearts, the cartographers scroll through endless reels of useless data. The head engineer is fired. He has created an engineering marvel that only takes pictures of itself.